And you mentioned before oxytocin, which you know, pop, in, in the popular press, you always hear this referred to as the cuddle hormone. So what exactly is oxytocin at a very, very basic level? And what does that molecule have to do with this kind of change across development? Right. So oxytocin is a peptide hormone, um, but it's not like a, it's, it's basically in this context, and I can get into sort of different ways that the brain uses oxytocin if you're interested, but we have spent a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, synaptic versus sort of um, more hormone like volume transmission type of functions of oxytocin. But in this context, what we're talking about is oxytocin working as a neurotransmitter. And so it is being released in very small amounts and in a very synapse specific way. Um, and so, you know, I think the the cuddle hormone idea is really much more of an accurate descriptor of oxytocin's um, sort of more released into the CSF, going everywhere, kind of affecting everything in a in a general kind of way. So, I, the way I the way I talk about it, the two types of oxytocin really, um, I talk about it as mad love versus platonic love, right? So, mad love is these magnocellular oxytocin neurons, they just dump like massive quantities of oxytocin into the bloodstream and, and, and into the cerebral spinal fluid. And so they just bathe the whole brain in, in sort of oxytocin, right? And that form, that sort of bathing of the brain in oxytocin enables, you know, very long lasting, powerful kind of attachments but they're not really sort of sophisticated. So like, I mean, or, or narrow, right? So like, you know, when you fall in love with somebody, you know what this feels like, right? It's like everything is roses and you don't even notice that he never puts the toilet seat down. And then he, you know, le- you know, is a procrastinator on everything that, you know, taxes and cleaning and whatever. Uh, but you just don't notice it. You're like, oh, but he's so cute. I love him, you know? And, and so that sort of big, big love is in a sense a little bit crazy, you know, it's a mad love, you know, I'm madly in love with somebody. And I think, you know, when parents fall in love with their babies, it's the same thing. You know, it's that sort of, if you had to care about all of the details of the love, right. Um, you might, you might not ever want to fall in love with a baby because, you know, in some sense, they're sort of needy psychopaths who, you know, take all of your attention and give nothing back. But of course, as a species, we would never survive unless we were able to fall in madly in love with our babies. And so we just disregard all of that information. But that's very different. That mad love kind of function of oxytocin is very different from oxytocin's, you know, what I call platonic love. And so this platonic love is what we are using oxytocin, which is released by these other neurons, the parvocellular neurons in much, much smaller quantities and in very specific synapse specific ways. And those parvocellular release mechanisms we think are well suited for the type of attachments that we think the parvocellular neurons are good for, which is sort of peer peer attachments, right? So when you're deciding whether or not you're gonna let somebody into your you know, social group, you know, you're evaluating them. Is this person going to have my back when I need it? Is this person, um, you know, reliable and, you know, going to be um, sort of loyal to the group? So you're you're not just, you know, evaluating them and uh, you're not just like falling in love. You're sort of deciding whether they they you really want to include them in your group. And also, you know, you're not going to have like, systemic responses to them. So your eyes aren't going to dilate. You're going to be able to sort of play poker a little bit and and keep your emotional response to the person a little bit more um, hidden so that you can not let them know necessarily whether or not you're going to include them or not include them. And in fact, we think that that ability to kind of keep your your love close, if you will, and before you decide whether you're going to um, let someone in your social group, that, fun- that type of oxytocin, that parvocellular or platonic oxytocin, um, we think is 
something that, you know, is important for social cognition, you know? Mm -hmm. And so social cognition is this idea that, you know, um, you are able to make a guess, a reasonable guess about what somebody else might be thinking um, so that you can anticipate your behaviors based on what you think they're thinking, right? And so this has also been called theory of mind. It's something that you absolutely have to have if you're going to play poker, right? You have to be able to say, I think that guy's got my jack and whatever. I don't really play poker, but you know, you need to be able to sort of make that guess um, it turns out it's the kind of thing that people with autism are very mm. bad at. Um, it's one of the things that's impaired in autism. Yeah, I, I never, I never thought of this particular thing before. But, and I don't want to get into autism quite yet. But, but I would suppose that an autistic person would would not be very good at poker. That's right. Right. I mean, autistic, like in the hospital, you know, when you see patients with autism, you know, they are. Um, they're sort of unaffected in the way that they're sweet and kind. And, and, and because they're not very good at playing these, you know, mind games. In fact, I would suggest that there's a little bit of an opposite between autism um, and psychopathy or antisocial personality disorder is the way we, we talk mm. about that clinically. Um, because people with who are psychopaths, they're actually very good at these theory of mind type of or social cognition games right there. In fact, they use their ability to say, I know that you know that I know that you know, right? They use that ability to um, to manipulate people, right? It's, it's one of their gifts, right? They use it so that they can um, get that what they want, whereas autistic people are, you know, are not not as good at this. And so one idea is, is that, you know, and if you ask and if you ask patients about this, you know, people with who are psychopaths, if you say, why did you hurt my feelings? They will say, because it was interesting. I wanted to know what would happen. Right. Um, whereas if you ask a person with autism, why did you hurt my feelings? Their answer is more likely to be something like, because I didn't know I was hurting your feelings. Mm. If I did, I never would have done it. Right. And so this difference between the two types of, um, you know, the social cognition. So, you know, this importance that what we think is really important for um, this other type of oxytocin neuron, um, we think is, is the key to understanding some of these other diseases uh, of the social brain, which we can get to in a minute if you 